Welcome to Frame Devotional, where the words of God is our sole authority. Let us pray. Dearest Lord, we bless you for your graciousness towards us. You give us more than we have ever deserved, and we praise you, Lord. Teach us how to be gracious to others and to find joy in giving. Amen. There is so much joy in giving, but it is often overshadowed by a culture that teaches us that ownership of stuff means success. Have you noticed how amazing you feel when you either participate in giving or witness giving? Yes, it's an exhilarating feeling because by so doing, you showcase your father's character. It's like finally fitting into that space that was made just for you. Acts 20 verse 35 reads, I have shown you in every way by laboring like this, that you must support the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. The Christmas tradition of St. Nicholas or Santa Claus is based on giving. The fable that originated in Turkey tells of a 4th century bishop who wanted to help a poor family provide dowry for their three daughters and he wanted to do this without embarrassing the family. So he decided to throw gold coins down their chimney on Christmas Eve. As the story goes, the coins fell in stockings that were hung to dry on the fireplace. And thus came the tradition of hanging stockings in the fireplace. The opposite of Santa called Krampus is also part of the tradition in Alpine countries like Austria. This creature is an evil one whose gift bags hold punishment for naughty people. The yin and the yang of Christmas, if you may. Now we can ignore all this fable and tradition, but do not lose the message that we reap as we sow. Galatians 6 verse 7 tells us, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. As a man sows, so shall he reap. In Acts chapter 9, we learn of a woman named Tabitha or Dorcas. She was a disciple of Christ and one of integrity and kind character. Dorcas was a selfless woman who catered to the poor of her community. Sometimes we get caught up in the idea that in order to give, we need to have an abundance. But that's not true. And the story of Dorcas teaches us otherwise. She was a seamstress, and this was a gift that she used to bless people and bring honor to her God. And the diamond of her ministry was her joy in serving. Psalm 100 verse 2 tells us, Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. We often think that this verse is just about having a joyful countenance when we go to church or Bible study, but this is not so. It is about finding joy in giving and real pleasure in serving the Master. But then something happened to Dorcas. Acts 9 verse 37 reads, About that time she became sick and died and her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room. Two golden hands stopped working. A wonderful, kind human spirit stopped existing. The community could not let her go. So they found Peter, who was in Lydda, a city close by, and pressed him to come and pray for life to be restored. When Peter got there, the community showed up in numbers and they stood around to show him the work of her hands. The Bible says all the widows stood around him crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was still with them. Acts 9 verse 39. Peter could sense the loss of this woman. 
It was not just a personal loss to her family. It was a loss to the community. Her good works continued after life left her body. She made her mark by showing the love of Christ to others. In her personal ministry, Dorcas showed people what serving God was all about. And not only was the community blessed and pleased, but God was pleased with her. So when Peter got down on his knees and prayed, God was thrilled to grant the wish for Dorcas to be restored to life. The testimony of her life would continue even in death because her resurrection would be told throughout the entire city. Dorcas's death and resurrection testified of the power of Jesus to defeat death as much as it told of a God who invites us mere mortals to be partakers in the mission of bringing healing and joy to this world. Everything we do should be for God's glory. Notice what followed Dorcas's resurrection. Acts 9 verse 42 tells us, and it became known throughout all Joppa, and many believed on the Lord. Doing good and bringing glory to God is like getting a vitamin B shot. It gives a natural high. Why? Because kindness brings us into the realm of the love of God. It is not about tit for tat as in the fable of Santa and Krampus. It is about making a difference in the lives of the people God has brought into our space. Each person that is allowed into our space has a purpose. Some are for a season, but make no mistake, all are for a reason. And that reason is to bring glory to God. The way we treat others testify of who we truly are. And that's even the insignificant part. The major essence of our testimony is that when we take on the name of Christian, yet our actions mimic something else, we mislead the world and confuse the searching. Instead of bringing glory to God, we dishonor his name. Dorcas gave and all her world, everyone in her space, felt the difference that she made. I've often wondered, who will call my name after I'm no longer present? And when they do it, will it be with a longing for our ministry? Let's ask ourselves, will I leave a void or just a scratched hole that dust fills up in a couple of minutes? We seem to have found a shortcut for leaving our marks on the world. People now carve their names in trees or in wet concrete or set up virtual spaces and keep social media accounts. But alas, that means nothing to our God. The mark that we should make is one that brings glory to God. It is one of giving, of serving joyfully. And we need not be concerned about a reward. Because God has already given us more than we deserve. Yet, Jesus makes a promise to us in Luke 6 verse 38. It reads, Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Let us pray. Father God, we're all so thankful for all that you've given us. And we ask you to make us joyful givers, Lord. May our space be better because we were in it. May our communities know that we are your children. May our lives show your love. We thank you, God, for allowing us to serve and ask that our service will be joyful. Thus we say, Amen and Amen.